Hello and welcome back. This little one here is my own sort of workhorse vehicle, the Ford Focus. You might have seen, I think I did a, an alternator belt on it recently. Um, but the problem with this one is something that happens to a lot of Fords. And you've got the, the key in here. Um, on the earlier ones, earlier Fords, it used to just sort of gum up. You had the sort of tippy key, the one that's like hexagonal shape. It used to always gum up and give you problems. Then the next generation they gave you oh, wrong key. The next generation had this sort of setup where they've got a kind of bladed key, but it's attached to like a a wire, like a cable, which the lock actually sits further back in somewhere here. So the bit going from here to there is a oh, lot bits of plastic and stuff on it, which tends to break and as you can see this will happen with this one absolutely nothing's happening now the issue with this one is I've actually got a small coolant leak so I've just been topping it up once a week or something like that so I haven't topped it up for a little while and I went to get it in the bonnet and that happened so I can't check the coolant without getting that off so there is a little way where you can get into it, um, I think this bit pops off at the bottom and there's a couple of little screws somewhere in here but uh, what I'm going to do to start off with, I think I'm sure this is just clips at the bottom, so I'm going to start a little pry bar under there and see if I can prise that out a little bit. I managed to kind of prise that out a little bit, just pulling it, getting a little screwdriver, shoving it underneath and getting it, but there's little bits in the edge here, I'll see if I can get a light on. Um, you can just about see it in there, like a little, what do you call a scribbit? A screw rivet. See a little plastic disc inside there, so I need to try and get the screwdriver in there and underneath it and prop it up. So I might need a sort of longer, thinner screwdriver for that. I've managed to remove one of them. I was just using a little pick tool. I managed to get it in. And like I said, the little screw rivets, so if you take a couple of, if you manage to get a couple of turns on the screw head of it, what happens is, if I can get the thing out, I'll be able to get this one out, and you just leave it there. See, so if you get a couple of turns on the head of the screw, it actually sort of pulls the pin up, in which case it comes out quite easily, so I'm going to get the other side, I'll show you more detail uh, once I get it out. out. That's the other one being done with a little pick tool. Same again, I got the pick, so I stuck it in the plastic of it and managed to just turn it a couple of times. I can get underneath the screw head of it and lift it up, and then that allowed me to pull the whole thing out. I'll show you once once I've actually got it off. So what I think I can do is I can just yank on this grill, I think. If I, I think this lock may be connected at the back there, just with a couple of little plastic tabs. So... I'll give it a little pull and see how far it goes. I might need to get underneath there and get those little tabs off. But I'll show you in a wee second. I did I manage to get my hand underneath the back and push the tab on this side that way. And my hand up there and push it that way. That allowed me to push the, the actual lock mechanism back. So there's nothing holding this on at the moment. So if I just give this a good, good wiggle about, here we go. That's the grill removed. This is the thing I was talking about. That cable goes right up the back into the actual lock mechanism. Let's see if I can actually operate the lock at the moment. I don't think it can. So, I may need to break this bit off to get access to the actual lock mechanism. So, I'll play, play about with it and see if I can get anything. If not, like I said, I'm going to have to break it. Get the lock mechanism out. Pull that rubber boot back and can't seem to get it to go. So what I'm gonna do is this bit on the outside this bit on the outside here is plastic. So I know the lock mechanism lives behind here. So I'm just gonna get a hammer and just smash this off. Hopefully it'll just break off and it'll give me access to the actual lock mechanism. So I'll get a little hammer and just destroy this. Couple of little wax with the mallet and she's off. There's still some more plastic stuff in, in there, but um I'll dig all that out. I'll try and get a wee pick or something in there and get all that out. 
It's a little bit out of there. See this little tangs here? One on that side, and there was one on that side, so I wish I just give it a bit of lever with a screwdriver and it broke it off. So now I think I think I can see a little cross with the lock mechanism in there. I think if I got a wide enough screwdriver on that, I'll be able to turn it. When I turn it, that should pop the bonnet open. So just got a little screwdriver just because it's the easiest one to hand. What I'm gonna do is stick it inside here and let's see if I turn it anti-clockwise the bonnet should pop up. There we go. Now if I turn it uh, clockwise and then I should be able to lift that bonnet up. There we go. That's us. Um this is a little bonnet holder. So that my friends is how you break into a Ford that refused to open the, the bonnet. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to do anything with them, it's just literally just a temporary repair just to get in. I'm going to have to buy a new one of these cable things. Hey, you know, I'll go to the scrapyard and get one. And what you can do with this one to save messing about with keys is I can actually take the barrel out of this one. See, there's a little pin here. I can knock that through. Uh, another one here. Knock that through. So I'll walk around the, the sort of circumference of it. And I, I knock out all those pins. And this barrel of a lock should come out. So I then put that into the, my new part or scrapyard recycled part. And I should be able to use the same key. So at the moment I'm happy I'm just got in. So, for a temporary measure, I'm literally just going to put the, the grill back on and, you know, call it fixed in a moment. But that's how you get into the, the bonnet in an emergency. So what I've done is I've just pushed that back on. I've not actually, there's just little clips in the bottom of it. Pushed that back in. Yeah, the little screw it from this corner, I kind of lost it somewhere down, down there um, when I popped it off. I've got the other one, I'll just stick one back in it just now. So... As I was saying about these little screw rivets, if you turn them out a couple of turns, it takes the pressure off the back of it, like a bit of like a, a roll plug. So if you screw them out a little bit like that, you should be able just to pull the whole thing out. So I'll just show you how I've done it with my little pick, so I've got a better access. So the little gap between the bonnet and um. The bumper here, I got my little pick in here and went to the edge of it and I managed to sort of spin it and get the thing underneath it at the same time. Maybe take a couple of turns. So this is what I was doing while the bumper was closed. When you get it up like that, you can pop it up like so. And then you can get underneath the whole thing and pop it out. Oh, there's another one goes. <laughs> but you get the idea now. I managed to catch that one on the top of the engine. So just for you know, security type thing to hold it in place, I'm just going to shove that one in here. Absolute worst case scenario, if I need to get into this bonnet in a hurry, then all I've got to do is actually, I can pop that one off at that side and pull this off and just stick a screwdriver in to get it. So that will get me by until we get the proper fix for that.